Welcome to Bible at Home, a educational and devotional offering of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Bismarck, North Dakota. So for the week following January 29th, 2023, we are looking in John chapter 3 about Jesus and Nicodemus. So again, for your devotional thing, where have you seen Jesus lately in the world, in your life? maybe in the lives of others. Um, what, what are we looking for? What flavors and, and sensations are we looking for in this story? So we're looking for what is God up to? What, what part do humans play in God's plan? What's Jesus doing that, that's part of this story or plan? Uh, what surprises, unsettles, or comforts us? And what questions do we have? So let's go here. Now, there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the Spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, You must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. All right, so signs again. Um, Jesus has been doing these signs, these miracles. We don't know what all of them are, but there's enough of them that um, they have come to the notice of Nicodemus, and he is a Pharisee. He is one of those um, super special by the book followers of Moses. Um, he's not a priest, but he would be a lay person, a very high statue, and has his PhD, shall we say, in um, his Pharisee degree in understanding Judaism. So he, uh, we, we see, I love, what I always love about this story is Nicodemus is Mr., if you're familiar with the Myers-Briggs, he is Mr. Sensing. What do I see? What can I touch? What, what's going on? And Jesus is being Mr. Intuitive. No, it's, it's in you. It's within you. It's that sense of being. It's the spirit. Um, I'm talking about a birth of the spirit and, and many other, there's many denominations that have that very strong sense of what is your spirit like? Have you been born again? That sort of understanding um, that everything, um, it, it, it all depends on God's spirit. Um, this idea of, of we had that um, kind of, we'll get that in the epistles where this idea of the flesh is nasty, the spirit is good. That was the understanding at that time. But the, but the Jews were kind of associated with that idea of, of the flesh, of, of, things, of, of things being a little messier. So that's, that's one of the things. But this idea of, of a spiritual birth and if you've ever had that sense of, of renewal and rebirth, you know what he's kind of talking about. But we, we talk about that when we talk about baptism. You're born of the water and the spirit. The spirit is invoked to enter into you, to be part of you. You're born the water, just like we're the amniotic fluid. When a woman's water breaks, you know, birth happens the same idea, but with water and the spirit and this idea of, you know, pointing out, well, you know, you can feel the wind, you can hear it, but you can't see it. You can see the effect, but you can't see what it is. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. You're not going to necessarily see this Nicodemus with your eyes, but you're going to sense it with your spirit. So Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? 
Jesus, Mr. Sensing again. Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I had told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may not may, may have eternal life. Um, so here's Jesus asking the questions and giving his own answers, right? Um, you know, you, Nicodemus, you're a teacher of Israel. Why don't you get this? So, and, and we've heard this a couple times, you know, it's not the wise and the, the smart, but the infants, the ones who are ready who open themselves up to see this, who aren't going to be so concerned about what they see. Um, you know, think about a child, how they come to learn things. And as they learn to see and feel things, they lose that kind of sense of, and as adults, we kind of lose that sense of wonder and, and we just know it is because we've gotten into this, we have to see it to believe it type thing. But is Jesus saying, do you have to believe and then you will see? And this stuff is coming from heaven. It's not earthly. And Jesus gives his, his kind of biography here. The one who has descent, you know, no one can go up to heaven unless someone has descended, come down from heaven. And that's me, the son of man. And this story that I think we had that earlier this year, this idea of the, the lifting up of the serpent in the wilderness when the people were being bitten by the poisonous snakes, Moses had made that brass uh, snake. And if people looked at the serpent that was raised up on a pole, they would then be cured. So they had to look at the very thing that was killing them. They had to look up. Um, and that was what gave them life. So that incident is a reminder. Here's This would be something that Nicodemus would be very familiar with. But Jesus is saying, no, now I'm going to have to be lifted up so that the world can have that eternal life. See, third chapter, we're already laying down what's going to have for, happen for salvation theory. And Jesus says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but may have eternal life. Very famous quote, right? That's, our, the, that's the summation of Jesus' mission. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. So here again is that right from chapter one, the light, the word, um, bringing that clarity to the world. Um, instead of being at hiding in darkness and the unknown, we now have the light and the known. This idea of, again, God among us, Jesus abiding with us. He is to be the very presence of God with us. And I always love that, you know, God loved the world. God didn't necessarily like the world. <laughs> That's why he had to send Jesus. But he loved the world. And he gives us, it gives as a sacrifice his only son so that everyone, everyone who believes in him, believes in Jesus, that Jesus is sent from God, will not perish but have eternal life. 
So, you know, if nothing else, that simple statement is so packed with what it is that Jesus is about to do. And um, this idea of belief, keep, keep that in the front of your mind too. What is it about belief, trust in what Jesus and God has to offer? Let's pray. Birthing God, you gave us new life when we were born of water and the Spirit. Help us live into that new life, refreshed and renewed for your work. Amen. So, God, give me a new life. I mean, we can kind of, we talk about with baptism, we are reborn every day when we ask for that, repent, when we repent and ask for forgiveness, we're given new life. It's a promise we're given in baptism. And it's a gift. Kind of this idea of, as, as Jesus was talking to Nicodemus, I mean, he's giving this idea of this is something you receive. It's a gift. And it's coming from God. And what do you do with a gift? You open it. And it the source is someone else. But what you do with the gift then um, is up to you. Do you do you celebrate the gift or do you kind of poo-hoo the gift? Um, but open that gift, open that surprise, and see what God has in store for you. Have a great week. We continue John's journey with Jesus. Amen. Take care.